Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them to pray. And he gave them this model from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi guys, Karen Proctor here. Uh, I'm coming to do a virtual eulogy on behalf of my late brother, William Proctor Jr., better known to most people as Billy. Uh, Billy came to death on August the 17th, 2020. And we know since March of this year, 2020, we got when that the world was in a state of a pandemic due to the coronavirus. So this is the first time for me, and it may be a first time for some of you as well to do a celebration of life and eulogy virtually. But we know that as times change, we have to change as well. So this is why I'm going to do this uh, eulogy and celebration of life virtually. And I thank you guys in advance for all that has sent uh, your prayers and your condolences, your sympathy to me and my family. And I just want to uh, give my sympathy, condolences to all of my brother's children and grandchildren. So we are gathered here today to just pay respect to his life. Uh, Hebrews chapter nine and verse 27 says that it is appointed unto man to die and then the judgment. We know that after a person leave this side of the world, then there's going to be a judgment. Where would you spend eternity? And I believe that Billy would want me to ask you that question. Where would you spend eternity? As Hebrews chapter 9 and 27 says, again, I want to reiterate, it is appointed unto man to die and then the judgment. So we will be judged by God for the things that we did and the things that we did not do. And so life may be over for Billy on this side, but what about the judgment? I know, I know it seems like a hard question, but it is a fair question because God loved all of his children and he wants us to spend eternity with him. And so while we uh, still have life and breath in our body, I implore you to make a decision today. If you have not made a decision yet to receive Jesus Christ into your life, let him become your Lord, not only your savior, for we know that Jesus died, that we, every person, man, woman, boy, girl, Jew, Gentile, young, old, black or white, can have a right to the tree of life, meaning uh, spending a eternity with him. So after we die, there is the judgment. And I know sometimes it is really uh, hard to say goodbye. It's hard to say goodbye, but um, we are fully aware that nobody lives forever um, on this earth, but there is a eternity. So yes, it is hard to say goodbye. And it has been a challenging moment for me being his sister. It's hard to say goodbye when you think about the time that you spent together, whether it was good times, whether it was bad times, but you know, just growing up in that family together. And then you, you talk to the person one day and then the next day that person is not there. But we have to prepare our hearts and our minds as to where we are going to spend eternity. And I am uh, happy to say that 
uh, the last few months, well, I would say over the last year, this is something that I had the opportunity to discuss with Billy. We we prayed together. We talked about uh, things that went on in the past, growing up, uh, laughing, joking, all of that. But me being me, after the end of the day, after the end of the conversation, always directing it back to God. So what are we going to do as we are approaching this age? Life is not forever, but we know life is forever with Jesus. That is if you are a believer. And so, yes, those are some of the things that we did talk about. And so as Psalms 90 and verse 12 tells us to number our days, uh, Psalms 90 and verse 12, it says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And right there, the writer of this Psalms say, uh, wanted us, it was a prayer of Moses, the man of God, uh, that we would number our days because again we know that we can be here today we used to say a long time ago here today and going tomorrow but with the way that things are going now it will be kind of safe to say here today and even gone today and so this is why moses says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom so we need wisdom just to navigate through this world. As you can tell by everything that has been going on with the protesting, with the riots, with the coronavirus, uh, with the crimes, with the current state of what's going on politically here in America, it will be who won to just begin to apply your heart unto wisdom and to begin to think about your days because no man is going to live forever as james chapter 4 in verses 14 says life is but a fleeting vapor life is but a fleeting vapor you're talking to someone today and then tomorrow tomorrow you get the news that they are not here anymore. You may be uh, listening and watching me virtually, and I perhaps we have just talked yesterday, perhaps I saw you last week or last month, and when you know it, someone is making that call saying, this person is no longer with us. But again, the Bible tells us that in James chapter 4 and 17 that life is but a fleeting vapor and I know sometimes like I said it is hard to say goodbye to yesterday but when we know what the Word of God says even though our hearts become heavy as we mourn the death of a loved one then we have to encourage ourselves in the word of God, knowing that life is but a vapor. So we can go back to what Moses said, teach us to number our days and to apply our heart unto wisdom so that we may live our best life. We may live our best life on this earth and it gets better when we go home to be with the Lord. Because the Bible says that the death of the saints the death of the saints is precious in the sight of the lord so my dear sisters and brothers my my friends uh family members i just want to encourage you through the word of god today to just uh dig deep to uh just to question yourself to ask yourself, where am I going to spend eternity? Because sometimes we are gone, like the Bible says, like a vapor. Uh, so while we are still clothed in our right mind, 
uh, with the activity of our limbs and we know our name and we can put our foot on the ground, we have to think about where are we going to spend eternity? I know that God gave us life to enjoy life, but man is born to die on this side of the earth. And then we get the opportunity to spend life forever with Jesus Christ. If we allow him to be our Lord, we know that he is our the Savior because it is Jesus that died upon the cross for all men. But I want to encourage you to open up your heart to receive the Lord. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, uh, this is what Billy would have me to say. And I thank God for the last few months, well, the last year just about that we had time to spend together like i said before we would uh call each other we would uh laugh about things you know that growing up you remember he liked to talk about old things uh, so you remember this person karen you remember that person remember when you did this remember when i did that and we would laugh we would talk we would do all of that and you know just just share and so i am happy uh to have been able to spend those last couple of months with him uh some of you may be aware that he did leave miami and moved out of town but he came home i encourage him to come home uh and through my encouragement he did come home. He stayed, I think it was about two to three weeks and uh, we had time to uh, just really spend time together. I was able to cook for him and I was always waiting on what he would say about my dishes being that he was a cook. Uh, some of you may know that he loved to cook. Some of you may know that he did go to uh, culinary art school and so yeah and he would call me back because I would take the food for to him he would call me back and say man uh, I know that's not uh, parboiled rice that you cook he say yeah because you could tell that parboiled rice and I say yes it was it was like man that's parboiled I was like see it's an art to it it's an art to everything and uh, I remember one day I cooked uh, some black beans and he was like, man, Kay, that black beans was so good. Uh, how long you soaked it? And I was like, I didn't soak that. <laughs> he was like, are you kidding me? He said, it tastes like uh, the fresh beans. I told him, I say, see, you're a cook, but it's still an art to cooking. That comes straight from the can. It's just the love that I put in it. It's just the seasoning that I put in it. So yeah, we would talk about those things, uh, the food, uh, just taking him through Miami, you know, because he didn't have a car when he came back to visit, you know, so I would take him every place that he needed to go and, you know, just doing everything that I can do. So I truly, truly thank God that he allowed me to spend some good days with my brother, not knowing that it would be the last time that I saw my brother. And one of the things he was like, hey, I got to get me some crunk. I got to get me some crunk. And I got to get some mangoes to take back with me. So I took some mangoes off my tree. I packed it up for him. He went and got the crunk. And uh, yeah, he did some good gestures for me as well he was like i just want to give you this i'm like no i'm good i'm good he was like no i need you to take this so yeah uh i was just happy to know that we spent some good times together at the end and um most of you know that he was a jokester yes he was a jokester he loved to make jokes and 
growing up, we would say crack on you. He loved to crack on you. I remember in the house growing up, he would make uh, cracking, cracking on the other siblings and sometimes the brothers at least. Then he would call me, being the only girl in the house at that time, Karen, come here, come here. What, uh, tell me if he spelled this right, smell this and that. So yeah, he was a, a practical joker. And we spent the last days just laughing and joking over old things. And um, I can truly say, I thank God. I truly, truly thank God that we were able to laugh, to joke, to eat together, to ride together. Hey, come pick me up, shoot me here, shoot me there. Then I told him, hey, I ain't, I'm not your personal taxi, but you know my heart. <laughs> I would still go and take him where he needed to go. And so, like I said, it is so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. It's hard, but I'm praying to God every day to strengthen me because this, this death really, really um, was a blow to me. And I know that God know everything. He know our beginning from our end like uh, Moses said teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom there is a date that God has already approved for man to be born and there's a date that God approved for man to die so I like to say that dash in the middle that dash in the middle uh, what do we do with that dash in the middle? And you know, sometimes God will allow us to have our way, our own will, because God is not going to force us to do anything. Uh, and this is why we are taught in Matthew chapter 6 to pray in this manner when Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. And he taught them to pray in this manner, to let his will be done and his kingdom come. So beloved, for those of you that is here uh, in this virtual celebration, I want you to begin to pray that God will be done in your life. We can rest so much better when we allow God's will to be done in our life, rather than going our own way and getting off of course. And I know as mankind, sometimes we do get off of course, but that's one thing about the good shepherd. When you allow Jesus to be the shepherd of, shepherd of your life, he would always pull you back in the fold. But you first have to allow him to be the shepherd of your life, to pull you back in the fold when you are going in a direction, uh, doing things that's not his will. Because he loves us so much as the good shepherd, he would always pull us back. Uh, that his will will be done in our life. So thank you for joining me in this first time ever celebration of life and eulogy. I can go on and on and on because Billy was my brother and we spent so much time together. We had so much history together, but because of this being a virtual uh, celebration of life, I'm going to stop right here and God bless you guys. And I want to offer up a prayer for all of you that's in this virtual gathering. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you humble, O Lord God. I pray right now for your will to be done and thy kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. I pray, Father, that anyone under the sound of my voice and that's a part of this virtual gathering that has not made a commitment to serve you father i pray that the holy spirit will begin to tug on his or her heart that they will make this day the day that they surrender to you 
And Father, I pray for all those that are heavy laden, all those that are burdened with the cares of the world, all those that are mourning and dealing with the spirit of grief. Lord, we thank you that you are going to work every situation out. And Father, like you said, to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. And so, Father, as we leave this virtual uh, celebration of life, we cast all our cares upon you. We pray that you will strengthen us on every weak and leaning side. Father, we thank you for how you're going to move in our life this day and forever. It is in Jesus the Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you again. This is Apostle Karen Proctor signing out. God bless you and I love you.